so after discussing the peritoneal reflections in the uh, supracolic compartment now we come to the infracolic compartment see this is the infracolic compartment and this is the reference for the division the transverse colon and the mesocolon okay so now we have reflected this transverse colon along with its mesocolon now we are in the infracolic compartment so in the infracolic compartment mainly we are seeing the loops of small intestine which are attached which are having a fixed end through this mesentery to the posterior abdominal wall this oblique attachment this oblique attachment of the mesentery of the small intestine to the posterior abdominal wall is the root of mesentery okay through which it is it is fixed to the posterior abdominal wall so this root of mesentery extends between the duodeno jejunal flexure this is the junction duodeno jejunal junction in the right iliac fossa okay this is the right iliac fossa area okay so this attachment is oblique now if you see in the infracolic uh, compartment from the anterior abdominal wall in the midline you will notice that anteriorly there are certain folds raised because of the peritoneum covering different ligaments in the midline see this is the urinary bladder so from the apex of urinary bladder there is this remnant of urethus remnant of urethus see this structure in the midline this is urethus and it is extending till the umbilicus till the umbilicus and it forms the median umbilical ligament and the fold of peritoneum covering this median umbilical ligament is the median umbilical fold similarly you can notice this this fold raised again this fold raised and also coming till the umbilicus these are medial umbilical ligaments representing the obliterated umbilical arteries and these arteries are covered with fold of peritoneum known as medial umbilical folds further later while dissecting the anterior abdominal wall you saw inferior epigastric vessels remember the inferior epigastric vessels okay so inferior epigastric vessels again raise a fold inferior epigastric vessels these are the inferior epigastric vessels inferior epigastric vessels again raise a fold of the peritoneum known as the lateral umbilical fold okay lateral umbilical fold on both the sides see these are inferior uh, inferior epigastric vessels raising the lateral umbilical fold so there are one in the center two medial and two lateral and between these folds there are fossae so between the median and medial fold there is this area known as supravesical fossae supra vesical fossae because these fossae are lying just above the urinary bladder then medial inguinal fossae and lateral inguinal fossae okay medial and lateral inguinal fossae so the now the peritoneum is covering the rest of the anterior abdominal wall on both the sides and it is continuing with the uh, peritoneum covering the posterior abdominal wall okay and how it is continuing with the uh, peritoneum covering the posterior abdominal wall see this is uh, just the adhesion between it is more clear on the left side we will trace on the left side so this is the peritoneum covering the posterior aspect of the anterior abdominal wall you can notice that it is continuous with the peritoneum covering the posterior abdominal wall now it is covering the side of the colon this part is the descending colon so it is covering the side of the descending colon then anterior aspect 
and then it is continuing over the posterior abdominal wall and continuing with the left limb or the left attachment of the root of mesentery okay so you can notice a gutter like space lateral to the descending colon this is known as left paracolic gutter this is left paracolic gutter similarly now this layer is continuous anteriorly and this is this loop this layer is coming to push up from the wall then continuing as the left leaf of the uh, root of small uh, mesentery of small intestine then covering the loops of small intestine this is the right leaf of the mesentery of small intestine and now it is covering the ascending colon from the front and along the sides there is this fusion between the peritoneum because of some additions otherwise this is the right paracolic gutter see it is more clear on the upper part okay so this is the right paracolic gutter so you can notice that this hepatorenal pouch is continuous with the right paracolic gutter and through this right paracolic gutter the collection of fluid can move between the pelvic cavity and the hepatorenal pouch and it depends upon the amount of fluid and the position of the patient okay so the in inferior com, uh, infracolic compartment there are two paracolic gutters similarly this oblique attachment of the small intestine also divides this space into two triangular see one space is this and one space is this okay so there are also two spaces where if there is large amount of fluid it can also accumulate in these spaces and you can see that this space is directly continuous with the recto vesical pouch okay so these are the spaces in the infracolic compartment this recto vesical pouch is also known as pouch of douglas okay so it is the deepest part in supine position and if you are uh, doing a digital rectal examination you can feel any collection in this part okay you can feel if you are doing any digital rectal examination or you are doing upper vaginal examination in females you can feel any collection in this part okay because it is the deepest part and it is roughly 5.5 cm above the anal opening okay so this is the rectovesical pouch or pouch of douglas